Building a steel-topped bench for a knife-tempering oven. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and I'm also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And we're putting together a small knife shop. And among the things we're installing is a tempering oven so we can heat treat our knives. And here's how we build the table to support it. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And this strange construction I'm standing in the middle of is not a guillotine. Uh, this happens to be the base of a new table that we are building for our tempering furnace for Hobie's Knives of China. Uh, now all the videos you see about people working in their shops, so this nice clean shops and beautiful clean wood and all this kind of good stuff, uh, this thing. Uh, this is wood that was scavenged from the pouring of concrete. So this is pre-painted with concrete slip. Yeah! Uh, it was left over from a slab we had poured. The contractor left it. I dug it up. Waited 30 days. He didn't claim it. So all right. Good wood gets used. Uh, this table is going to have a steel top. And that top is going to be 1 8 inch thick, which is pretty thin to have a long unsupported span. That is the reason for the very heavy construction of this table, and that's also the reason we're going to put a cross piece across the middle here. So when we put the furnace on it, the tabletop doesn't sag under the weight. This long extension here is to allow a chill plate to be put down. So when the blades are taken out of the furnace, they're going to be wrapped in foil, placed on an aluminum plate, another plate placed on top of them, and then allowed to slowly cool to anneal, as well as hopefully not warp so bad on our longer blades. So this is the reason for the construction of this table. Now I am going to put a coat of paint on it so it doesn't look quite so ratty, but uh, yeah, we managed to salvage this good wood and put it to fine use. Now this will give you a better look at our construction here. And this is the table. Now actually, the furnace is probably going to be sitting about here. So it'll have one of its supports here, one here, the other two right resting on or very near this cross piece 2x4 that I'm just about to put in. Now I am using box nails. And these have ridges. They're more expensive than the common nails of the same sort, and they're also galvanized. But they drive straight, and they hold. Now if I were building a piece of furniture for the Queen's Chamber, I guarantee you, I'd do something a little more sophisticated than salvage lumber pre-coated with concrete slip. But, for the interior of a shop, the, <laughs> the lumber is sound, it was reasonably straight, uh, very rare these days to get pieces that are fairly straight, and solid, but a little bit grungy on the outside. Well, I can do with a little bit of grunge. Prior to getting started with painting, we're adjusting the structural stability of the table. Now we put our piece of metal on this portion here. And so this more squarish piece uh, is very, very solid. The legs are all bearing well. Uh, they're bearing evenly. The steel is fitting flat. So uh, this offers no difficulties at all. So we don't need to make any changes here. However, because of some maybe twisting in the wood or whatever, or it's just getting late in the day and we were getting tired when we were doing it, this is not nearly so level and straight. Uh, for example, we need to put here a piece of wood under. Now this makes this 
very stable indeed here. So it really needs that little shim. And on the rear here, we had even more difficulties. We connected these two legs with this piece of wood, and it is much was much too short. So this leg was seriously skewed in this direction. So we replaced it with this one, which fits it more nearly correctly. However, uh, this leg was short, and so it needed a shim for stability, as did this side. But now, we have it where it's nearly right. We need just a little more under that one. And we'll have this end taken care of. We now have our workbench painted. And next time you see it, we'll have some steel on it. And maybe even an oven. Our homemade bench for holding our tempering oven has now been completed. And it turned out very well and very solid indeed, particularly when we put metal on the top of it. Uh, this is our tempering oven. It runs up to nearly 2,000 degrees, although you don't usually run it at that temperature. And what we do with it is the knives go inside and they get heated. Uh, they get heated to uh, something between an orange and a white heat, usually. They are wrapped in stainless steel foil with a little piece of paper to soak up the oxygen so they don't scale that badly. And these stainless steel knives, very, very hot indeed, are put on this flat aluminum plate when they come out of the oven. And another piece of aluminum is put on top of them to keep the knives from warping uh, whilst they cool. Otherwise, particularly the longer blades will tend to take some sort of twist or bend, which you really don't want to have happen in your knives. The table itself is very stout. If you wanted to, you could stand up on top of it and dance a fandango, but I ain't going to do that. However, uh, some interesting things we'll learn. Uh, this was lumber, of course, that was coated with concrete slip, and it repainted just fine. Of course, the surfaces are a little rough, but in a shot, well, eh, it'll do, do good enough. And we have this furnace moved away from the wall a significant distance. Again, to keep this vial on the back from actually warping and melting under the escaping heat from this furnace. I don't know how much it's going to generate on the outside, but we will certainly find out and we will certainly see. The steel on top of the table, of course, will conduct heat very well. And no, we don't have any problems with these wooden members burning or any such thing. Uh, it's got enough distance here, plus the absorption of all this steel and metal. Yeah, uh, that's not going to happen. So if you have to build a bench for a furnace like this to treat knives, this dog leg shape is very desirable. This way a person can stand here with forceps, take the blades out, put them immediately on the chilled sheet, get his five or ten or however many out, lay it out, put the top cover plate on it, and with just moving of the body, he doesn't have to carry a knife any distance to put it down and do something with it, which you don't want to do when you're running around with a knife that's white hot, guaranteed. You want to just lift it, move it, put it down. So, uh, we're going to be off and running with this, and when we temper the first batch of knives, uh, we'll let you see how. One thing I need to tell you about is this 220 plug. Now, this was a 220 plug that we actually had, but as you see, the one that came on the machine is much different in shape. You can convert them, and it just involves changing three wires. But you want to make sure the ground wire goes in the right place. The other two can go on either side since this is a heating unit and doesn't have an engine that needs a current flowing from any particular direction. So, uh, yeah, you can reinstall these yourself. Just pay particular attention where the ground wire goes. And, of course, you want to make sure you turn off all the current when you do it. But now, this is Hovey Smith. 
reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. This is a view of some of our prototype knives, which incidentally we're also selling at this stage. Besides backyard deer hunting, I am the author of other books, including extreme muzzleloading, crossbow hunting, and even practical bow fishing. Now here's another look at our banner and some of our interesting knife designs. We also have in production the Billy Joe Rubido series, which is made of found steels. And here you see our rib flipper and forge cleaning tool made from parts of an old lawnmower and a chef's knife produced from a scythe blade that was made sometimes back in the 1800s. Now, initial production of our custom-made stainless knives is going to start in January. In the meantime, a few prototypes are available for sale. Now, you can place an advance order at the web address below. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 525 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.